finally arrived at the uh, at the polishing stage of this this shoe, not the other one, obviously that one's still in a dreadful state. This is the um, 1969 George Cleverly. I've been restoring for months. Um, it has been a monumental task, and these were in the most shocking condition. If I just show you the other shoe, um, I'm, those of you that have already seen the previous videos, forgive me, but um, we'll just remind ourselves of quite how grisly the surface of the skin was. Um, the whole thing was, you know, crunchy. If I, it, it's it's just dead. The whole the whole skin's dry, and it's it's crunchy, cracky and you know it's covered in surface surface cracking um, i've started to remove that cracking but that was not really the least of the problems uh, the the biggest issue was the um well the stitching much of the stitching bear in mind this shoe is 50 years old and it's been heavily worn much of this original stitching had failed and the skins had separated and it's still been worn with the failed stitching the the actual skins had, had, had torn down down here uh, and it, it had torn that side too. L likewise with this shoe, um, not much evidence of it now, um, but uh, where is it? Yes, it had torn quite badly here. And yeah, the same the other side. Um, most of this stitching has been replaced by hand. Um, all of this stitching around the edge here, all of the stitching around the elastics. The elastics is stretched dreadfully. Um, and the, the, the vamp area, um, you, could, you could pinch the skin. Um, and down here, you could really pinch quite a lot. You could push it around. The, the shape had, had been completely lost. That has been recorded on the previous videos. I'm afraid the, the repairs to the skins, where um, what stitching hadn't rotted, I just unpicked it, turned the, turned the leather over and managed to put very fine chamois leather and glued it on with leather adhesive. and made, you know, made the skin quite stable and then pulled it back and I've, I've re-stitched through the original holes, then trimmed off the chamois. I'm afraid that wasn't recorded. Um, the, um, use my trusty towel. Um, the, the shoe's been under restoration so long, way more than the year. And um, when I first, when I was uh, d doing the, uh, the leather the, uh, tear repairs, um, um, Instagram television wasn't available. I believe that's only been available over the last six months. So um, unfortunately those bits were missed. Let me just pop on a pair of gloves because this is, is, is quite a messy job I'm going to be doing, um, applying, the, applying the polish. So um, yeah, the, these, um, the, the tears to the skin, I've got, um, the, the skins usually tear around the heels and that's quite common. And um, I'll do some um, repairs on, on later videos, but yeah, this one was particularly bad, but I'm afraid it wasn't recorded. It was just, um, it was just fixed so long ago um, before we had um, Instagram uh, TV. I think I might have recorded it for YouTube, but not for here on IG. Now, um, when this, this shoe's got no polish, even though it's got quite a sheen to it, all that is, it's been moisturized and moisturized for about two weeks, and I've buffed it with, um, I've buffed it with various uh, cloths. Let me just uh, get a nice soft one. Yeah, I think that one's quite soft. I'm just going to give it the final little, um, final little buff. And um, the more you buff the skins before you apply the polish, the better the polish finish will be. Polish doesn't really, doesn't really hide um, scratches and marks. Um, it, it will highlight them. So you need to work on the skin, get the skin very presentable before we apply the polish it's a bit it's a bit like if you were if you had an antique table that was varnished and if the varnish was cracked you wouldn't apply more varnish over the cracks you'd take the old varnish off or if there was a, a scratch in the varnish you wouldn't try to you wouldn't try to re-varnish over a scratch it would have to be stripped and it would be sanded and then re-varnished exactly the same with the shoes so i'm just giving them the final final dry buffing there's no there's no polish on this skin whatsoever it's purely buffed skin that's been well moisturized now i've got two types of polish one very hard and one very soft um, what happens when you wear a shoe it bends obviously here as you walk across the vamp down into the welting the, the skin bends and it also tends to bend and, um, and around here it moves those areas will crack if the polish is applied very heavily it will crack. People make the mistake of trying to shine the whole shoe to like a mirror shine. Realistically, you can only get away with that on the toe caps, slightly down, down the edges here, across the toe cap. 
and, and you can get away with it around, around the heel area. These areas, they tend to move and um, a, 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 the way to get a mirror shine with your polish is to, to put layer upon layer upon layer and it builds up, so gets thicker. The thicker and smoother the polish, the better it reflect light and appear to shine. But I'm afraid obviously if you build up thick here on, 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 on areas that are soft and will flex as you walk, the, the, within the first couple of seconds of you wearing them, it just cracks and you get like a it looks like crackle glaze, you know, it's, it's dreadful. So I've got two polishes here. I've got a very hard polish, and excuse my tins, they're pretty much empty, but there's plenty here. This one's a very, very hard polish. And that one's like, gives like a mirror finish. It's hard work. You can't just, it's, it's quite stiff. You have to work it quite, quite hard. And you do have to mix it with a little bit of water, which I've forgotten. And I'll, uh, I'll reach across and get some water in a second. And then this one's a much softer polish. Very, very easy. You don't really need to mix that one with, um, you don't need to mix that one with water. So I'm going to apply the soft polishes on the areas that move. I'm going to apply the very hard mirror shine polishes on, on these areas like the toe caps and around the back. Just forgive me for 10 seconds while I stand up and grab a bottle of water. I do need some water. You can probably hear me fidgeting around. Yeah, I've got a spray bottle here, that'll do. Let's pop that down. Now, get my, let's get my towel over myself, put the old shoe out of the way, and we'll start. I'm going to start with the, uh, with the softer polish, just in the, um, in the areas that will, will flex, um, that we know will crack. I'll, I'll put the softer polish here. Um, I'll, I'm going to try working dry. Let me get a, uh, a cloth. Let's have a look. This one's good. So ideally, that one's got a little bit of polish from something else, but we'll just use a fresh area. And ideally, you use a very, very soft cloth. Don't, don't use anything that's hard and scratchy. And uh, let's see, yes, this is a very soft polish. I won't need to mix it with water. Um, and I'm not going to be putting very much polish on, on the areas I know will crack. I'm just working in circular motions. Um, it's okay to sort of rub over the stitching. If you, if you apply it very thickly, let me just uh, go back and get more polish. Let's bring the polish into where the camera can see it. There we go. I've limited range on this, uh, on this camera, but... Um, so I just apply very, very light, very light applications. And I'll put two or three very light applications with the soft polish on the area we know will crack. It's okay to go over the, um, over the stitching, but bear in mind the stitching will clag. So try and, keep the, uh, try and keep it fairly sparing. Keep the polish as sparing as possible over the stitching and into areas where it where it overlaps, there's one, one layer of skin on top of another, it's possible to get the polish all gunged and into the holes. So yeah, don't go mad, just don't go mad. A lot of the work's already been done. The hard work with the shoe's already been done. And we've, we've sanded the shoe, it's been, um, it's been moisturized, it's been buffed, and it's, yeah, a lot, of the, uh, a lot of the hard work's already been done. I'm not trying to hide much now. Actually, I'm not trying to hide anything with this polish. I'm just trying to highlight the work that I've done so far. So I'll work all the way through. That's, that's two applications. And um, I'm not the best of polishers, if I'm truthful with you. You know, I'm, I'm actually a hairdresser. I'm not a shoe, a leather worker. And uh, this is purely a hobby to me. It keeps me out of trouble. I find it a bit of fun. I'm not the, um, I'm not the best of polishers, but uh, this, my polishing will be adequate for, for our purposes here. So, yeah. It's, it's quite a long process polishing. Um, you, you need, I've got what there, one, that's a tiny little bit more. There's two, two coats and now I'm just going to rub it until it's nearly dry. You can, by working in circular motions, as the polish is very soft, um, you, it, it's very slippery. And as the solvents evaporate from the product itself, it becomes slightly more, um, slightly more difficult to rub. Um, so, but you can, if you're skillful, there's a very, very experienced polisher you could just keep rubbing and rubbing and rubbing until it dries. Um, if you're not so experienced, it's, it's perfectly fine to get it to this stage where it's probably 85, 90% dry. You can feel it starting to stiffen under the cloth and simply stop and then come back to that and use a completely different part of the cloth and buff that totally dry. But I'm going to stop here. And what I'm now going to do is go for the other the other cream, the other, no, it's not a cream, it's a polish, and it's a very, very hard polish. There's not much left in the tin, it's, it's all cracked. And I also need 
a few drops of water in the lid. So let's just, um, the water helps reduce the friction. Um, and it, it just allows a very hard polish to glide somewhat more easily. So um, uh, I have to be careful because the, uh, the polish is falling, ap falling apart in the tin, but um, it's very hard. Um, just rub some of this onto the cloth. A bit more because it's extremely hard, quite hard work to apply. And I need a tiny bit of water in my lid. Where's it gone? There it is. Not a lot, just a, just a tiny, tiny bit. And I'm going to work on the different, different areas there. This is fine, I can build this up. I'm only going to work with this harder polish on the areas that I know won't, won't crack when the shoe, the shoe is worn. Um, these are the areas that are completely fixed. And um, it's, a long, it's a long process. Polishing a shoe like this might take up to an hour, so I'm clearly not going to, I'm not going to do the whole thing on camera. It'd be unbelievably tedious to watch. You have to work this harder polish much, much, much harder. Another tiny bit of water. Just mix this one with water. And uh, apply another coat. I always work in circular motions. I think most people work in circular motions. You, you could rub it sideways, but it might. I don't know. I don't think it'd go on very easily. So ideally, if you can, and work in circular motions and working down into the welt here and get a little bit of the hard polish on the edge of the uh, on the edge of the sole and the welting here. So I will I will only do on the areas that I know will crack. I'll, I might do one more. So it's already had two coats, very fine. I might do one more very light polish, but uh, maybe as much as 10 or 12 coats um, on, the, uh, on the toe caps. I need a bit more polish here. It's, it is a hard job, you know. It's, it's, there's, no, there's no fast way around this. It's slow. There we go, that's quite a lot of polish. I need more water. I can feel it dragging. Let me just, where's my water in this little lid here? Just, just a tiny bead of water helps the cloth to slip and slide. And uh, there's nothing more to polishing than this. Just go very slowly. Try not to let it build up in the, uh, in the stitching. Try not to let it build up in the holes. And moreover, where the, where the different layers of skin, where they're joined together, try not to let polish build up. Uh, you know, it will build up. So you can go apply the, um, apply the heavier part of the polish in the, right in the middle of the skin rub a rub and then as you feel the polish almost disappearing you've still got a few dregs on the on the cloth then you can go on the stitch areas and or on the overlap areas you won't get the build up but i'm not going to i'm not going to go on and on it's a tedious process but um and as i said to you i'm not the best of polishers to be truthful with you you know it's i've been polishing for years but I'm, <laughs> i don't think i'm very good at it um there we go so I tend to put a few layers on and I, I rub it the best I can. As I feel it starting to dry, I personally, I, um, I stop and I allow it to dry naturally without me rubbing it. <clears throat> some of it's more professional um, as, as a polisher, maybe some of it does polishing for a living, would just keep rubbing and keep rubbing and keep rubbing until it's completely dry. Um, but that's extremely difficult. You really do need to be, a, a, you know, a very, very, very experienced polisher to be uh, to be working in that way. It's perfectly fine to, uh, get, you know, get to a situation like this where we've got a couple of layers. And it's been well rubbed in and stop. Maybe wait 10, 15 minutes, and then come back with a slightly different area of the cloth and, and buff again. What I'm going to do, I'm going to stop here because this could, you know, this is going to take a long time. I'm going to continue off camera. Um, the areas, probably 70% of this shoe will be done in the softer polish. Um, and then I'll, just, just the toe caps and the, um, and the, the, the heel area, um, I'll do in the much harder polish. I'll do several coats, then I'll bring it back to camera um, quite matte without it being buffed um, but it will be dry I've had a few hours and I will I'll finish it off with a with a very clean cloth and um, we'll, we'll we'll have a look at the results it's, ex it's exciting this stage because honestly truly I've spent I don't know way over 70 hours over a period of over a year on this pair and to, to see them come together um, it's, it's exciting but it's, it's very easy to jump to this stage before you before you truly ready and then you regret it um, it just highlights everywhere where you've skipped so let me stop here and um, we'll come back in a couple of days and have a look at the final result 
and we'll compare the completely finished shoe to the one that's still got a long way to go.